to الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهد الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين إلى يوم الدين. We love those guys. Um, so in all these ayat today, I wanted to talk about a topic that um, it's more of a personal reflection and it's like an ongoing reflection. In all of, and it's actually a reflection that began when I was in elementary. Um, so in all these ayat. We might get a little personal. I'm going to try not to to expose myself. Um, so, inshallah ta'ala, today's topic is humility versus arrogance. And where does confidence lie in this? And how are we supposed to use all of these qualities to our advantage or all of these um, like things to our advantage without harming ourselves and without, um, without damaging our own souls? Okay. So, um, when I was in elementary, I think maybe grade six, I thought I was the shiz. But I was like top tier, um, best at soccer in my entire grade. And while that might be true, there's obviously someone better than me. I'm like, maybe not in my grade. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> so. You still believe it. <laughs> so well. Um, Christian, I don't know those close second, but. Um, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so yeah, I thought like I was so good at soccer, so good at math, like I was so smart. Um, that I was so funny, which I probably was, but yeah. <laughs> um, anyway, so I thought like I really thought very highly of myself, and I thought, oh yeah, I'm definitely better than this person or that person or whatever. Um, and so subhanallah, I remember reading a hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and you guys probably all know this hadith. Um, but this hadith literally shook my entire being, um, and I was like, "Well, I'm going to help." Um, so the hadith is: the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam says, "لا يدخل الجنة من كان في قلبه حبة أو مثقال حبة من خردل من كبر." وعليكم السلام. So the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam says in English, "He will not enter Jannah." Who like who Yarasullah? He will not enter Jannah. He who has the weight of an atom or the weight of a mustard seed of arrogance in his heart. So not even the size of a mustard seed, the weight of that mustard seed. If you have that that much arrogance in your heart, you will not enter Jannah. And I heard this in elementary. I was terrified. I was like. Jannah seems like a cool place. I don't want to be like, you know, expelled from Jannah. So I literally lost sleep over this for weeks. Um, I didn't want to interact with anyone. I barely spoke for like weeks at school. Um, and subhanAllah, I remember like hearing this hadith and like, like how are people going to Jannah? Right, because I'm, I'm going crazy. How can you not have that, that much arrogance in your heart? How is it possible not to have that that teeny tiny bit of arrogance in your heart? And it didn't make sense to me because I'm like, like how are you not going to have that? And so I remember hearing this hadith. Wassalam, I remember hearing this hadith, and I was going crazy, and my my mind just couldn't understand how a person can have no arrogance in their heart. And so I remember actually talking to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala and saying, Ya Allah, there's no way I'm going to get to that point. Like I, I don't see myself ever getting to that point. But yeah, Allah, you're you're capable of anything, and so help me get to that point. So the dua that I made most consistently as a kid was, Yeah, Allah, do not allow me to die. Wadikusalam. Um, Yeah, Allah, do not allow me to die if I have the weight of a mustard seed of arrogance in my heart. And this is a dua that I used to make every single night. Um, and then Subhanallah. By the will and the grace of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, um, 
I thought very low of myself after that. Um, I got to a point where I definitely like don't have any arrogance in my heart. Alhamdulillah, obviously the heart flips and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows better what's in your heart. But I got to a point where I didn't think of myself higher than anyone else. Um, and then it started to get to then I started to get to um, thinking very low of myself and then not thinking that I'm worthy of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not thinking that I am worthy of his blessings upon me, not thinking that I'm worthy of the good that he bestowed upon me, not accepting any of my good qualities, not claiming any of them, not, um, not accepting the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon me to, to think that I am actually worthy of it. And so it went into feelings of inadequacy. Um, and then it gets to self-hatred. Self-hatred is absolutely terrible. And may Allah spend time to protect all of, us, all of us from that. And so once I got to that point, the dua that I was making most consist consistently is, Ya Allah, allow me to have confidence in the absence of arrogance. There's a very, very thin line that separates the two. There's a very thin line that, that separates Confidence from arrogance. So like my dua is, Ya Allah, allow me to be confident without being arrogant. Right? So there's humility. And you can be humble and still be confident. Still be sure of yourself. Still, still know what you're capable of doing without getting to the level of arrogance. And there's a very thin line that separates the two. It's very easy to cross over to arrogance once you get to confidence. Do you guys? Okay. Mm -hmm. So... This entire process of self-development, not only in the, like when talking about arrogance, but this entire process of self-development, when talking about anything, anger, jealousy, um, desire, any like disease of the heart, there's a word for this in Arabi. In English, we would say self-development, right? Or working on yourself. In Arabi, the word is tazkiyah. Are you guys familiar with the word? Okay, tazkiyah, when you say in Arabi, um, you can like automatically know that uh, or you can assume that the person is referring to tazkiyah to nafs or the purification of the soul. Do you guys get it? And so tazkiyah is you working on yourself, you trying to tame your soul, you trying to control your desires. And what do I mean by like taming your soul? SubhanAllah, something that I learned like from a very young age and I think this is why like the arrogance hadith really shook me. Um, is that you're constantly in a battle with your own soul. That your soul is not always your friend. That your soul can be your biggest enemy. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the soul in the Quran. And he says, That the soul is inclined towards evil. So every human being is composed of three things. A mind, a body, and a soul. The soul is the one that lasts forever. The soul is eternal. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, uh, die and then we all die and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings us back it's the soul okay and so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that the soul is inclined towards evil we naturally incline towards evil 100% we have fitra we naturally want good we naturally like feel the the inclination towards goodness but also our soul wants to fulfill its desires constantly right and sometimes your desires are haram Right. And so I was talking to Arish before this and I said, if my soul desires bubble tea, I can go get bubble tea and it's not haram. But if my soul desires to murder someone, then I'm, <laughs> we have a problem there. Right. And so. <laughs> uh, China, if you're watching. Anyway. Um, so, yeah. So. There, there are things that you can give into. You can fulfill some desires, but others you can't. Now the soul just sees desire and says, give me, right? I want it. But you have to constantly be in this battle with yourself. Jihad and nafs. It's called jihad and nafs. That you're struggling against your own self. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also talks about the nafs in the Quran. And he says, وَلَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانِ وَنَعْلَمُ مَا تُوَسْوِسُ بِهِ نَفْسُهُ وَنَحْنُ أَقْرَبُ إِلَيْهِ مِنْ حَبِلِ الْوَرِيدِ So he says that we have created man, we have created human being, 
And we know what his soul whispers to him of evil. So like all of the whispers of, of we think it's shaitan, but sometimes it's our own selves. So like in Ramadan, for example, when shaitan's locked up, we can't use him as an excuse. And you hear a whisper in your head saying, go smash that cupcake. <laughs> that's your nose, right? That, that's your own soul. Your own soul is inclined towards evil. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we created mankind and we know what his soul whispers to him. And we are closer to him than his own jugular vein. This vein is the closest vein in your body. This vein is essential. You cut it off, you're dead. Unless Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants you to live. Yeah. So if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, I know what the soul whispers to the human being. I know what the soul whispers to my creation. And also with this, is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only one who is worthy of judging people. You see, like, don't, don't judge people. Why? Because we don't know what a person's soul whispers to them. My soul can constantly be whispering to me, Rayan, murder Arish. Okay. <laughs> murder Arish, murder Arish, murder Arish. <laughs> okay. My soul is constantly whispering that to me, perhaps. And then I go and hit Arish. And then everyone comes, Rayan is so terrible. <laughs> it's better than murdering her. But my soul was whispering to me, right? Allah is a better judge than anyone else. Allah is the only one who can judge and it be fair. Do you guys get it? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only one who can actually judge because he knows what the soul whispers to the mind. He knows what the soul whispers to the mind because of the desires of the body. Do you guys get that? Subhanallah. And so no one can, can judge anyone because no one understands what the soul whispers to the mind. Also, I mean, that is part of it too, but just the idea, like, you know, as humans, we are inclined, like, some, some people will try to see the other perspective a little bit, but in the end, there's always two sides to pancake, right? Mm -hmm. So, like, as a person, you're going to maybe be a little more biased, perhaps, towards your own yeah, opinion. Yeah, opinion. kind of side, he sees all of there is no bias, mm -hmm. it's just justice. Yeah, 100%. Right. SubhanAllah. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is the most fair judge. No one else can judge like he can judge. And so with, uh, with like the purification of the soul and the constant battle with the soul, um, this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls jihad and nafs. There's jihad, like fighting jihad, and then there's jihad and nafs. Both jihads are struggle. Both of them are struggle. And so when you're constantly trying to fight your soul, you're also trying to purify it. You're trying to strip it from any evil inclinations it has. You're trying to tame it. You're trying to say, no, I'm not going to murder Arish. Let's go get bubble tea. Okay. <laughs> and so you're trying to, you're really, really trying to purify yourself. Tazkiya means to cleanse yourself or like to cleanse. And so Allah SWT uses the word in the Quran in a different format. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قَدْ أَفْلَحَ مَنْ تَزَكَّى Are you guys familiar with the verse? He has succeeded who has, who has cleansed it, his soul. Or قَدْ أَفْلَحَ مَنْ زَكَّاهَا That he has succeeded who has cleansed the soul again. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says, He says, فَلَا تُزَكُّوا أَنفُسَكُمْ Or أَنفُسُكُمْ mm, Let's see. Yeah, and fusakum. He says, don't think too highly of yourselves. Don't think that you're you're top tier. Don't don't talk too highly of yourself. Don't think that that you're so pure. Who He says he knows better who is pious, who is conscious of him. Sometimes we don't even know our own selves. Right? SubhanAllah. And so if we talk too highly of ourselves. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows our hearts better than we know ourselves, right? And so I think it was Imam al-Shafi rahimahullah or Ibn al-Qayyim, can't remember. Anyway, so he says, I have never met anything more difficult than my own soul. For it is constantly flipping on me. Do you guys get that? And then also linguistically, the qalb, the heart, yataqallib. It comes from, from the same root word. That it's constantly flipping. 
it's switching up on you. One day it's pious, one day it's thinking about evil. Right? And so, for example, like to, to talk about how we don't know ourselves, how we, we shouldn't try to claim ourselves pure. Umar bin Khattab, anhu. everyone knows the guy? Great guy. 10 out of 10 rating. Umar anhu promised Jannah. The Prophet وسلم, says, if there was to be a Prophet after me, it would be Umar. But obviously, there's no Prophet after him. He said, if there was to be one, it would have been Umar. Umar anhu, is one of the 10 promised Jannah. The Prophet وسلم, spoke so highly of Umar, anhu, he was in his close circle. Whenever the Prophet وسلم, was mentioned, Abu Bakr and Umar would follow. Umar anhu, was amazing. He was super pious. He was super conscious of Allah. Now the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, couldn't read or write, correct? And so he had a scribe. He had a person who would write down everything for him because he couldn't do it himself. And so the Prophet وسلم, tells this scribe, he says, write down the, the names of the hypocrites. And so he tells him the names of the hypocrites. And now Umar anhu finds this out and he goes to him crying, crying constantly. Like, and he goes to him multiple times saying, Did the Prophet وسلم, write about me that I'm a hypocrite? And he's crying, tell me, did he say that I'm a hypocrite? Did he write my name amongst the hypocrites? Umar anhu understands that he can't claim himself to be pure. Umar anhu's promised Jannah. Right? But he still was questioning his own soul because he knows how the soul continues to flip, how the intentions continue to flip. Right? And so he's asking, did Rasulullah say that I'm a hypocrite? Broski is top tier in Jannah. And he's asking that. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with him. And so to to when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَلَا تُزَكُّوا أَنفُسَكُمْ Hope that guy won't. فَلَا تُزَكُّوا أَنفُسَكُمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, So do not claim yourselves to be pure. Do not talk too highly of yourselves. هُوَ أَعْلَمُ بِمَنِ اتَّقَى He knows better who is more pure. Okay? Umar رضي الله عنه, he also says something like really profound. He says, do not like, do not claim piety for a person until they die. Because they still have a long way to go. The night is still young. They could still fall into to immorality. They could still fall into sin, which would, like, you know. <laughs> anyway, so Amr who says, once they die, then, then you can claim them to be pious. Because their life is over. Okay, so, like I said, this entire process is called Tazkiyah. If you guys do want me to talk about Tazkiyah more, it's self-development. Um, just let me know, inshallah ta'ala. It's basically everything like to do with psychology, but Islamically and with a purpose. Like you're, you're actively trying to work. Um, I don't know if any psych majors are here, but like it definitely does have a purpose. But yeah. So uh, what is arrogance? The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, one of the companions actually asks him about arrogance and he says, Ya Rasulullah, I like to wear nice clothes. Like, is that, is that arrogance? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, no, that's not arrogance. Arrogance is, is thinking that you're better than someone else, but arrogance is also knowing the truth and refusing to follow it. Arrogance is knowing what's right and wrong and choosing wrong. And so the people of Israel, like the Bani Israel, the Jewish people, like of the Torah. No, they're not from Israel. Because <laughs> it doesn't exist. They're not like Palestine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, free Palestine. Um, and so like they, they, uh, the people of Bani Israel, they were arrogant, right? Why? Because they knew what was right and they chose wrong. They knew the difference between right and wrong and they still chose wrong. And so remember Surah Al-Fatiha, Al-Maghdub is alihim. That ghadab is upon them, that, that anger is upon them because they know what was right and they, they knew what was right and wrong and they chose wrong. They chose not to follow right. Does that make sense? Okay. So um, when talking about arrogance, 
ابليس ام ميلس من سعاده كريسن ام لوزر يا They say, like, they say that rather than um, cursing, mm -hmm. at least to just, like, you know, uh, seek refuge from him instead. instead of, That's it. Just, May Allah protect us from him. <laughs> <laughs> May Allah allow him to leave us alone. Um, and so Iblis's downfall was arrogance. Why? Iblis was a worshiper of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Iblis was a huge, like, uh, He, he was very pious. Iblis worshipped Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He gained the ranks of the angels. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala elevated his rank to the rank of the angels. Roski was a living in Jannah amongst the angels. Like angels were flying over him. He saw the rivers of honey, water, wine. Yeah. Um, and so his downfall was he saw Adam and he's like, I am definitely better than that guy. That guy is dirt because he's made out of dirt. So he's like, I'm made out of fire. I'm definitely better than him. And he goes to like Adam alayhi salam and he sees him. He actually enters Adam alayhi salam in one hadith. Um, and he comes like from his nose. And he's like, wow, he's hollow. I can fill him with a lot of desire. He, he's going to be filled. And so Iblis knows the composition of our bodies. Um, and he's out to get us. So Iblis, when he sees Adam, He's like, I am definitely better suited for the role of the beloved of Allah. Um, this guy is going to be a leader on the earth? Absolutely not. Um, he is definitely not qualified. I was born first, created first. Um, and so I should definitely get that job. It's my right. And so he sees Adam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells everyone, humble yourselves before him. This is my creation. Humble yourselves before him because I command you to do so. And so Allah SWT tells the angels and everyone in Jannah, Isjudu li Adam. Vasajadu illa Iblis. And so they all bow down. Allah SWT tells the angels, bow down to Adam. And they all bow down except Iblis. What does Allah SWT say in Surah Al-Baqarah? Aba wastakbar wa kana min al-kafirin. He says he became like haughty and arrogant. Aba was takbar. He refused. He became haughty and he became arrogant. And he was from the disbelievers. Iblis believed. Right? Iblis believed in Allah, in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When he talks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is like, why didn't you bow down? He says, Rabb. He calls Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Rabbi. He calls Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala my Lord, my Master. Iblis had faith. Iblis knows what's up. And he still chose to disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he still chose to, to refuse belief. I think the issue is that th there was a problem with his belief in the first place. Like, yeah, yeah, he believed in the sense that like he knows there is all the But like from this whole thing, you can really see that he had absolutely no No trust or regard for Allah. You know, Allah said something, and he's just like, yeah, no, I don't like it. Mm -hmm. I don't care. It's not even like in the sense like the angels, for example, right? Allah says, uh, I'm going to make a hadith on this, or a successive authority for this earth, right? Mm -hmm. And then they they actually got worried, right? So like, you know, uh, you're going to create this creature that's going to, you know, shed blood and spread corruption everywhere you live while we sanctify you and, and you know, exalt your holiness mm -hmm. kind of thing. And Allah says, I know that what you don't. Yeah. Right? So that's, mm -hmm. see, that that would be like, you know, we don't get it, but okay, we bow to your, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, to yeah. infinite knowledge. And, yeah, yeah, and we right? submit to you. Exactly. Yeah. But then it makes us just, and, and then it comes also from the audience, right? Like this quiet day is like, You know what? I'm better than this guy. I was made for wire. I was here first. Why should he get this position? Yeah, yeah, for sure. And that's what he says. Like, ana khairu minhu. Like he he literally says it flat out. I am better than him. Like I am better than him. And so for sure, arrogance was his downfall. Right? Arrogance was the thing that made iblis shaitan. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala said, "Fakhruj minha." Right when he did that, Allah SWT says, leave from here. You're kicked out of Jannah. <laughs> like, you have pride and arrogance. You have more than an atom or, or the weight of a mustard seed. 
out of Jannah you go. Right? Iblis was kicked out of Jannah once that arrogance came to him. And so like the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi you're not going to enter Jannah. Like Iblis was kicked out of Jannah for this reason. And so um, obviously we don't want to fall into the sunnah of Iblis, the footsteps of Iblis. Um, so may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from that. Also, the Prophet Sallallahu talks about arrogance. And he says, be careful with arrogance. For arrogance is a garment of Allah. And he says it belongs to Allah. And whoever competes with Allah for arrogance, Allah will destroy him. That on the day of judgment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will break him and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will destroy him. Arrogance belongs to Allah. Do you guys get that? Allah is the only one worthy of being arrogant. Arrogance is rightfully his. Because if you're arrogant, then you think there's no one better than me. Do you guys get that? I'm the best, there's no one better than me. Or I am above this person at least. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is above everyone else. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is above everyone and there's no one above him and everyone is below him. Everyone is below him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has the power to do anything. So therefore, he is the only one who can be arrogant, rightfully. Arrogance is his garment. Arrogance belongs to Allah and whoever competes with Allah for arrogance, Allah will destroy him. It only belongs to him. And so if you if you think that you are the best or you think that you're better than someone else, understand that there's always someone better than you. If you think that you're the best soccer player, understand that there's always another better soccer player than you. Right? Cristiano Ronaldo might say that he's the best, which it could be true, but there could be some random kid in Nigeria throwing, kicking a pop can and he's actually the best. But we don't know. Right? If you think that you're the smartest, Musa alayhi salam, Love the guy. Someone came to him and they're like, Yeah, Musa, who's the smartest man on earth? Musa Ali Islam was doing some calculations. He's like, uh, I'm a prophet. So I think me. I talked to Allah. Maybe me. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Yeah, Musa, you're you're not the most knowledgeable person on earth. Actually, one of my other servants is. And so who does Musa meet? He meets Khidr. And then he sees Khidr and he's like, Whoa, you are smart. You killed a man, a little boy. You um, poked holes in a boat. You ruined a boat for a family who was using that boat to make their living from the ocean. And you built up a wall that, the, like for a city that was being so rude to us. And then he realizes, does everyone know these stories, by the way? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And then he realizes, he understands when Khadr explains everything to him, he's like, dang, I am not the most knowledgeable person. You definitely are. Right, subhanAllah. In Surah Yusuf, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَفَوْقَ كُلِّ ذِي عِلْمٍ عَلِيمٍ That above every person of knowledge is someone more knowledgeable. And who is Al-Alim? Allah. The angels say, Ya Rabb, وَسِعْتَ كُلَّ شِيءٍ رَحْمَةً وَعِلْمًا Ya Allah, you fully encompassed everything in mercy and knowledge. Nothing moves without the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and without the knowledge of Allah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows everything. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows the dimensions of everything. He knows the measurements of everything. He knows the weight of everything. Right? Like that, that du'a. يَعْلَمُ مَتَاقِيلَ الْجِبَالِ يَعْلَمُ مَتَاقِيلَ الْجِبَالِ He knows the weight of the mountains. وَمَكَايِيلَ الْبِحَارِ And he knows the volume of the ocean. وَعَدَدَ وَرَقِ الْأَشْجَارِ and he knows the, the amount of leaves on trees. الأمطار, and he knows the amount of raindrops. Go outside, try counting the raindrops. <laughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows all of that. You are not above Allah. You cannot compete with Allah in arrogance. You can't compete with Allah. It is rightfully his. Right? No one, no one can claim that but him because no one is better than him. No one is greater than him. When we say Allahu Akbar, we're not saying Allah is great. Did you guys know that? God is great? We're not saying that. If we're saying God is great, we're going to say Allah Kabir. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is great. When we say Akbar, it's a comparison. It means Allah is greater. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is greater than anything and anyone. And no one is greater than him. Do you guys get that? And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only one who can rightfully claim arrogance. No one else can claim that besides him. It belongs to him. Try competing with Allah for arrogance. Allah will destroy you. Don't try competing. That was obviously sarcasm. Um, now, kibir actually leads to oppression. Right? Arrogance leads to oppression or oppressiveness. So the Prophet Muhammad Wasallam says that Allah SWT revealed to me so he says that Allah SWT revealed to me not to be arrogant, to, to completely destroy arrogance until no person oppresses or so no, no person oppresses another person or he thinks that he's better than another person. When you think that you're better than someone, it's so easy to oppress them. It's so easy to be unjust. Do you guys agree? When you think that you have the upper hand, it's so easy to oppress someone. How many of us have little siblings? Yeah. Um, my little sister is very tough, so she makes it very hard. <laughs> but <laughs> and the chance that I do have the upper hand, which is, um, yeah, very, very, uh, not often. Um, it's easy. Right? It's, it's very easy to oppress someone when you have the upper hand. When you have more power than them, it's very, very easy to fall into oppression. And obviously, oppressors are, are not very liked by Allah SWT. Oppression is definitely not a good thing. Um, and it's definitely not something to fall into. So, or like good to fall into. So Allah SWT also talks about the oppressors or the Prophet Muhammad SAW. Um, he says that he who is oppressed, there is no there is no hijab between them and Allah like for their du'as. That their du'as go directly to Allah SWT, the du'a of the oppressed is answered. Right? Now imagine being the, the oppressor. Being the one who, who is oppressing. Right? We spoke about in Surah Al-Fatiha. We spoke about how Allah SWT's mercy stretches everywhere. That even when Allah SWT is, is punishing, that even when Allah SWT is using his name, um, when he has the name uh, Shadid al Iqab, the one who is very severe in punishment, how even then that's a mercy. Right? Because, for, the, for example, the Aigur Muslims, when they're being tortured and they're being oppressed, they're calling upon Allah as Ar Rahman and they're asking Allah, Ya Allah, destroy my oppressors. And that dua is answered. That Allah SWT will surely destroy their oppressors. Yeah. I know you said like you don't have any like, so if somebody is in your life, but mm -hmm. you don't want them to be in your life because you feel like you're either taking away from your deen, it's like, it's not like you have more, like you think you're higher than them, but like, is that also haram or something? Because you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, thinking that you're better than this person in a way of they're bringing you down when you feel like that doesn't mean your level you know okay I mean? so that's actually a really good question yeah. when it comes to that if it's not family yeah then you can distance yourself from them you shouldn't you should try not to have anything bad in your heart against that person but if they are bringing you down make dua for them and distance yourself from them mm -hmm. um and it doesn't mean that you're arrogant but I also ask Allah to, to purify you of arrogance when you're doing that process. Because it is easy to fall into arrogance. Yeah, when it that is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> um, okay. Um, yeah. Um, I say to fulfill your rights upon them. Um, like imagine like you're, you're like you have to live with that person you have to deal with them but they are literally toxic and like they bring you down and like 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 some people are some people you can deal with them but some people are like so difficult like you can't like you can't deal with them yeah you spend like 31 years of your life trying to deal with them and it only gets worse yeah like 
So uh Sharo Brahim Ali Salam, love that guy. Um <laughs> so his dad. Yeah. But with that, I say fulfill your obligations unto them. Brahim Ali Salam obviously tried doing more. Um, so your obligations for the family, I don't know all of them or I don't have all of them mm -hmm. memorized, but definitely talk to them within three days. <laughs> so like, yeah. Um and if it's someone who you don't live with, as long as you don't have anything in your heart against them, I guess you don't have to speak to them constantly. For example, like Ayat family, I don't have anything in my heart against her. I don't speak to her every three days. Um, and then also, like, obviously not talking bad to them, that they're protected from your hands, your mouth. Um, but yeah, definitely just fulfill your rights upon them. I see. Okay, so um okay so the prophet muhammad he says that a man continues to display arrogance and he continues to to think of himself as higher and he continues to display haughtiness until he is written amongst the arrogant al mutakabbirin in the quran are not spoken very highly of when Allah SWT says about al mutakabbirin in the Quran, it's definitely a very, very intense punishment upon them. When Allah SWT speaks about Fir'aun, he calls him al mutakabbirin Right? When uh, when the man from the family of Fir'aun like, comes, okay, so when Musa alayhi salam says, وَقَالَ فِرْعَوْنُ ذَرُونِي أَقْتُ الْمُوسَى وَالْيَدْعُ رَبَّهِ so when Pharaoh goes to the people and he says, I'm going to kill Musa, I am scared that he's going to corrupt your religion and he's going to spread mischief upon the earth and corruption. Um, Musa says, I'm going to kill Musa and I am going to kill so Musa Alayhi says, I seek refuge in my master and your master from every arrogant person who does not believe in the yom and the day of uh, accountability. So Fir'aun was arrogant because he didn't think that he was accountable for his crimes. He didn't think that he was going to be accountable, that he's going to be brought to account for what he did. He thought, I'm going to be scotch-free. I'm I'm not gonna face any consequences for killing innocent people or for starving people. Pharaoh did not believe that he was going to be brought to account because he was arrogant, because he thought he was above the law. Okay. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um switching from arrogance to humility. Um they're very two opposite sides of the spectrum. When we talk about humility, there are two types. There's humility in the sense that you think very, very low of yourself and you don't think of yourself high in any regard. You don't accept anything good of yourself. Um, and then there's humility in the sense, and then there's humility in the sense of uh, thinking that you're not better than anyone, but still recognizing the good that Allah SWT placed within you. Do you guys get that? The two different, there's one healthy and then one unhealthy. And so when Allah SWT talks about um, the believers versus the non-believers and how the believers act towards them, Allah SWT says, that they are very humble with the believers. They are very, very like low with the believers. They don't think of themselves as higher. They don't have to prove their strength with the believers. They don't have to show that they're that there's something with the believers. And they are very strong against the disbelievers. What does this mean? When Allah SWT talks to the Prophet Muhammad about the believers, he says, in Surah Al Hijr, such a beautiful ayah. He says, and lower your wings of mercy to the believers. Lower your wings to the believers. When your wings are high and you're flapping your wings, you're showing your strength. You're showing your honor. Allah SWT is saying, lower your wings to the believers. In other ayats, Allah SWT tells us, lower your wings to your parents. Okay. And so when Allah SWT is saying this, 
he's using this analogy because you don't need to show your strength with the believers. And this is something that, that we we all kind of do the opposite when we're with non-believers, with like people who are not Muslim. Well, we'll act like so humble and like the good and, and we're not confident in our Islam. When we're with believers, like, do you know who I am? Right, like, do you even come to the masjid 10 times a day? Like, you, you think that you have to prove your, your strength to them. Whether that strength is how many times you come to the masjid, how many times you fast, um, how many ajza of Quran you have memorized, you feel like you have to prove yourself and your strength to the Muslims. Allah SWT says, no, it's the opposite. You're supposed to be very humble with the believers and very strong in honor with the disbelievers. And so when we're going out and we're being humble and we're saying, okay, I'm not better than anyone else, a lot of the times that can look like we're just degrading ourselves, okay? And with the believers, that's good. Umar radiallahu anhu, amazing companion, right? All throughout his life, he had power. He was never not in power, radiallahu anhu. He always had, had like a strong sense of honor as well and very, very strong confidence. Umar radiallahu anhu, before Islam, was an ambassador for the Quraysh. He can read and write. He was learned. He was very smart. Like um, he was smart, uh, like street smart and book smart. Radiallahu anhu. And so he he had the status. He had the power. And then when he was in Islam, he still had the status and had the power. After the life of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he still had the strength and had the power. He was Amir al Mu'minin. He led this ummah like the best thirteen years of, of this ummah's life after the death of the Prophet Sallallahu and Abu Bakr's time. He did amazing things with this ummah. Broski conquered Al-Uds. He conquered Jerusalem. Okay. Jerusalem, obviously most powerful place on earth. I'm not biased because I'm Palestinian, but maybe I'm a little biased. But whoever has Jerusalem, <laughs> whoever has Jerusalem has control over everything else. The Romans, when they had Jerusalem, they had control over everyone else, over the rest of the world, right? And so Heracles is giving him the keys. He's like, I don't even want to fight you, buddy. Just take the key. And so he conquers Jerusalem. He enters Jerusalem as a conqueror. Umar radiallahu anhu, like his, his time was, was probably, like I said, the best time of this entire ummah. No one was poor. No one was poor. You see how you have to pay your zakat? Right, two point five percent of your wealth. If you like have no debt and everything, if you you don't have debt and like you're not okay, Umar who during his time, people had to pay their zakat, but they didn't know who to give it to. Your zakat has to go to the poor. It has to go to the poor, and so people are going frantically. Like I have to fulfill my obligation of paying zakat. They're going to the people of the streets. Do you need money? I need to pay my zakat. Do you need money? And they're like, no, no, I have enough. Right? I'm not poor. I have enough. Umar radiallahu anhu, amazing leader. So respected. Everyone loved him. Everyone loved Umar radiallahu anhu. No one had anything bad to say about him. And the one lady who did, Umar radiallahu anhu, baked her bread and cleaned her house and did everything for her for day after day after day. Didn't even know it was him. Everyone loved him. Umar radiallahu anhu had so much power. He was, he was top of the world. Amir al-Mu'mineen, the, the leader of the believers. And so one day, he gets up on the pulpit on the mimbar. And everyone's like, oh, Amir al-Mu'mineen, he's going to say something crazy. He's going to give us such a crazy reminder. Maybe we're going to go conquer China. Right? He gets up on the mimbar. And he says, oh, people. Listen to me. Everyone's like, yo, what's happening? He says, I remember a day when I was a shepherd working for my father. And when I would mess up, my father would beat me. And he walks down. And he leaves. That's it. <laughs> no punchline. <laughs> That's it. Everyone's going crazy. Why did this guy just expose himself? Why did he just tell us that we're going to think so low of him we're going to start laughing at him one companion came to him they're like yeah, why would you say that 
Like, what possessed you to say that? And he said, I felt a little piece of arrogance coming close to my heart, and I wanted to diminish it. I wanted to destroy that, that pride before it enters my heart. And so I went in front of the people to degrade myself. So I can remind myself, humble yourself, know where you came from. Know that you're not above anyone else. Your dad used to beat you when you messed up. Okay. Do you guys understand like the, the extent of what he just did? Okay. So imagine I go on Instagram. Okay. <laughs> and I make a video. Like, Salaam Alaikum. Uh, Mubarak. Uh, today I wanted to talk about how yesterday I messed up. And uh, my mom started yelling at me. And I got beat. I don't know why you did it. <laughs> People understand. <laughs> yeah, and then end of video. Everyone's like, what? <laughs> Why is she telling us that she just got in trouble with her mom? Right? Like you you start to think like lower of the person, or you just start to laugh at that person. Umar radiallahu anhu, to greater extent, obviously. Right? Leader of, of all the Muslims, leader of the Ummah, Umar radiallahu anhu goes and degrades himself like that. Do you guys get that? He was very, very humble with the believers. And with the non-believers, no one was, was like him. Right? No one was at his level. And not like with the extravagance and, and like fancy clothing and stuff, because we know what Broski wore to Jerusalem. Right? But he was he was very confident in himself and he was very confident in the message that the Prophet Muhammad brought. When Umar who accepted Islam, everyone knew. Why? Because he was so confident in himself. He was so confident in the message of Islam. He went, like, leaving the, the house of Arkan bin Abil uh, bin, bin Arkan. Yeah. So he went, leaving that guy's house. And he's like, I want to share with everyone that I'm Muslim. And this is the time where people were getting killed and tortured for being Muslim. So he goes to a man. Who can't keep water in his mouth longer for five than five seconds? Constantly talking, constantly like saying the news to the people. He's like, "I'm Muslim." And the guy just looks at him, runs to the rest of Mecca, tells everyone. Everyone knew that I'm just Muslim within like twenty minutes, and they all come and beat him up. All the leaders of Quraysh come, circle him, and they start beating him. Umar radiallahu anhu was confident. Umar radiallahu anhu showed his honor in front of the disbelievers. Umar who was not going to compromise his deen for anyone. There's also a companion by the name of Abdullah, Abdullah ibn Hudayfa. Great, great, great companion. Um, he was actually captured, I think, by the Persian, like, Persian uh, leader. I think it's like an emperor or something. Right? So he was, uh, he was captured by him. And he was taken to him. And he said, accept our religion. And we will make you like uh, an ambassador will give you status. He's like, absolutely not. And he said, accept a religion and we will give you status and we will give you wealth. He said, I won't accept a religion. I'm not going to give up the religion of the Prophet Muhammad for anything. Okay. And so Abdullah ibn Hudayfa, he was brought forth and uh, there were a bunch of other Muslims being captured by them as well and they were in jail and they were being tor tortured as well. And so this companion, this companion was being kept in these jails and uh, he was only given, he was being starved. And then once he got to like his breaking point, they would feed him pork and alcohol and they would put it in his cell. Okay, pork and alcohol, sound familiar? CCP? Yeah. Um, pork and alcohol, they would put it in his cell. The next day, the guards would see it and it's still there not touched he's not eating and he's not drinking the next day the king does the same thing and he's not eating not drinking he's starving himself it's halal for him the king knows it's halal for him and he, but he wants to degrade him and so the king brings him and he says why didn't you eat and drink if it's halal for you and he said i didn't want to give you the satisfaction <laughs> He's showing his honor and he's upholding his honor and he's very confident against the disbeliever. Do you guys get that? Do you guys get why he didn't drink the crazy? 
Like right? Stronger, but not better. Like, yeah. Not like a better being, but a stronger one. Yes, exactly. Right? And so uh, the king said, okay, what am I going to do with you? And he said, um, bow down to me and I'll let you go. It's like, I'm not going to bow down to you. He kept on saying, bow down to me and I'll let you go. He's like, absolutely not. Um, I'm not sure if it was the same companion, but there was a king who, like, everyone comes and they bow. And obviously he wasn't bowing. And so he went and put him in a room that's sloped. Okay, it's sloped. And so when you enter, you have to, like, bow down, forcing him to bow down. And so this companion turns around and starts walking backwards. <laughs> right? He's <laughs> like, absolutely not. Right? He, he's not going to degrade himself in front of the disbeliever. He can do it no problem in front of the believer. And it's good. He can lower his wings in front of the believer. But in front of the disbeliever, he's going to flop his wings. He's going to show his honor. He's going to show his confidence. And so finding that balance. Right, finding that balance of being very, very humble with the people around you, with, with the Muslims, but also upholding your, your confidence in your deen and in your religion and in yourself against those who are not Muslim, against those who are not like of the, of the Ummah, of the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, amongst the believers. Um, Can I tell a little story? Yeah, for sure. Okay. So actually, one time, um, I was sitting so and then all of a sudden, uh, he noticed the like, like in a defensive process, like, what happened? Yeah, he's going to see. Angel. Uh, and then uh, the answer is a stuffy. The stuffy, who is the stuffy? Very good, both the trumpet. So they were thinking, okay, all the hours come, <laughs> right? I think it's almost it's over. But no, the survey came for something else. So this was at the end of the Prophet's mission, so I said, and he told the Prophet so I said, that he had an option. He can either be a rich king, like Suleiman Ali Salah, for example, uh, and the likes so of he could be a rich prophet, or he can live the rest of his life as a humble prophet. And Muhammad was a little bit unsure, so he turned to Jibreel and Jibreel told him. So then he decided you will be a, a humble prophet. He used to eat reclining sometimes, and so kind of after that, he would only eat sitting. He said that it was not fitting for a humble Nabi. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> Um, and then also of like being humble but also being confident is recognizing the blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed upon you. Right? Not not um denying the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon me. And I know you guys are probably thinking like Rayyan, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted me food. Of course I'm going to to claim that as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's blessing upon me. And I'm going to be thankful for that. But also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave each one of us talents. Okay, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave each one of us things that we're good at. He, he blessed us with certain gifts. And so to deny those gifts entirely is to be ungrateful to the one who gave them. Do you guys get that? Mm -hmm. It's not only about like trying to be humble, but no, you're actually starting to be ungrateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for granting you those gifts. And so for sure, humility and humbleness in that is amazing. Maybe recognizing that this gift is only from Allah and it's not from my by my own virtue or from my own goodness, but the goodness that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed me to have. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can take that goodness back because it's his. So ask him not to, to take it back. So for example, my sister is great at baking. Okay. Shout out Sugarholic. Um great at baking S U G E or H O L I C dot Yig. Yeah. Anyway, so um, yeah, she's great at baking, okay? And then when people say, like, oh my god, Rimi, those were such good donuts, she's not going to be like, uh, were they? I don't know. She's going to say, oh yeah, thank you. She's going to recognize that she's a good baker, but she's going to attribute that to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah makes it easy, right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it easy. For example, let's say you're, um, 
you're really good at art, okay? You're amazing at art, not only like drawing, but you're great at writing. Um, you can articulate your words very well. You have a gift, you have eloquence. Recognize that as a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When someone says, well, your words are so clear, you're so eloquent when you speak, that drawing is so amazing. Don't say, eh, like, mm, thank you, but no. Say, thank you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it easy. That it is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Be confident in that gift that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you and, and uh, amplify it, right? Increase in that gift. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you a gift for, um, what are your guys' talents? Working, being good at community work. Yeah, yeah, being good at work. Okay, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you a gift for that, amplify it, work on it, so that you, you're more confident in that gift and you attribute it back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala constantly. Say, this is from Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed me to be like this. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can take that goodness away at any point. And so it's not from me. And that's where the humility is. Right, you understand it's not by my own virtue, it's not because I'm so amazing, it's from Allah. So you're recognizing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you a gift, you're confident in that gift, but you're also humble because you understand that it's not from your own self. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um so inshallah ta'ala, just the whole like point of, of all of this was trying to find a balance between um humility and arrogance. And I think the balance, like with within those two, is confidence and gratitude. And gratitude, yeah, I like that. Right, confidence and gratitude. You're finding a balance in between those two. And like I said, there's a very thin line between um, confidence and and arrogance. And the way that you can stop yourself from getting to arrogance is gratitude. Right, you're grateful to the one who gave you whatever you're confident about. And you're not arrogant because you know that Allah, the one who gave you it, he, like, arrogance belongs to him. And he is most worthy of being arrogant. That it is his garment, and if I try to compete with Allah for it, I'm done. Um, does anyone have any comments, questions, concerns? If you don't have a talent. Then you have a talent, but you just didn't discover it. Yeah. Not me, I'm Um, also like smaller things like she was saying not things that are more common like for example you might have a way with kids you might be really good at talking to them at sitting with them you might have a way with like people who are old right they might just yeah have a natural inclination towards you um you might be able to understand them very well you might have a thing with animals like the talents that like she was saying it doesn't have to be like something very like definite or very common but it could be anything and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives those gifts to who he will yeah. um also uh we have another sister with a really good gift um sister Karima uh Dosaria by Kate yeah D-O-C-E-R-A-A it's, it's Portuguese <laughs> Yeah. 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 Yeah.